Hello, and welcome to Up Your Wine Game. Today I'm gonna to be tasting none other than Camus Cabernet Sauvignon, which, as everybody knows, is a lot of people's favorite wine. Um, very famous, a lot of story here, and a lot of wine here. But let's get to the, the bottom of it. This is 2016 Camus Cab. So, just a quick little story. When I first got into the business, I worked for a wine distributor in New Jersey. This was one of the brands that they distributed it. Um, was that a word? So, Camus used to be probably a $20 bottle of wine. This, this bottle right here used to be a $20 bottle of wine. Now it's about $80. Uh, and their special select was about $55. And back then, we're talking 1990, that was like kind of an absurd amount of, uh, of wine. Came, uh, Opus One really hadn't come out yet. So this was, the Camus special select was like the big deal. Again, it was like $55. And people were like, these guys are crazy but they're crazy like a fox. So the whole story with Camus and why it's so popular, the Wagner family, they've been this three, at least three generations of winemakers in Napa Valley. Um, they are some of the old heads. They were around with Mandavi, they were around with Gergich, uh, Montalena, and all the big wigs back in, in, you know, back in Napa, back in the 70s. Um, so started out as farmers, the whole bit. But Camus took a turn. So back when, in the early 90s, when I got into the business, or in 1990, these guys were making amazing Napa Valley Cab, full body, full structured wines that could age and were full of structure. And like I said, this was about a $20 bottle of wine back then, um, which was considered fairly pricey, but it was a hell of a bottle of wine. And all of these guys made wine to basically compete with Bordeaux and to age. Fast forward, the market started to get crowded. Napa Valley became the playground for a lot of people in Silicon Valley and the whole bit. So you had a lot of outside money come in, buying up wineries, making wines, and true to form, they wanted returns sooner rather than later. So they started to craft wines that were meant to be drunk earlier, sooner, younger, not terribly age-worthy. So a lot of the guys in the business that were originally in the business, Cake Bread, Duckhorn, they continue to make wines um, that are meant for aging. Camus started to turn, I'd say, uh, let's see, we're 2020 now, so around two, 2004, 2005, tremendous wines. Once you start getting into 2012, 2013, they kind of decided um, that they were going to appeal to um, a broader market. And so you had, when, when wine, and this is what wine does, wine at the top tier, whether you're talking about Premier premier Cru Burgundy, where you're talking about classified growth, first growth Bordeaux, the best wineries in Napa. Uh, they, depending on how the global economy is going, you will find that markets open up for these wines and people will pay whatever for these wines. At a certain point, um, when the Japanese market um, for luxury goods went through the roof, a lot of Napa wineries were like, you know, this is where we need to be. Came and started crafting wine that was immediately appealing, immediately drinkable, and in my opinion, not age-worthy. Um, and they re and they had, had a tremendous amount of success. Just to give you an idea, the, the grandson of the guy, the Wagner family, started the brand Maomi, which you've heard of, Maomi. Pinot Noir, made it in a style that tastes nothing like Pinot Noir, we'll get to that in, in a separate podcast, um, but made it very drinkable, very user-friendly, sweet, doesn't taste like Pinot Noir, but hideously popular, and he sold that brand within seven years for $350 million. So from a marketing standpoint, uh, the, the Wagner family knows exactly what the hell they're doing, and k is, is no exception. So let, let's taste it. Uh, this is a 2016 Camus. Again, this is you know well after they decided they were going to make wines for immediate consumption and not really make something that was meant to age, in my opinion. And again, all of this is my opinion, but it's a you know I've been in this game 30 years, so I'd like to think that my opinion is based somewhat in fact. So again, when I smell this, it is right beyond belief. It, it's like if you took uh, plums and prunes and blackberries and currants and you reduced them down into a syrup. That is what I am smelling on the nose. Is it unappealing? No, it actually smells good, but it smells like dessert. It doesn't smell like anything that I would consider to be a typical Napa Valley cap. 
what do I usually get out of Napa Valley Cab? Intensity, that's the first thing that comes to mind. The structure of the fruit, the aromas are very focused and intense. That is what um, you know. I was trained to, to pick up on, on Napa Cab. And this, it literally is like there's a cocoa, yeah, cocoa, like powdered cocoa, black currants, um, holy shit, chocolate fudge. Like it's really, um, yeah. And so my nose is already telling me that this is gonna be super light, which um, is appealing to a lot of people, hence the prisoner. Um, but to me does not smell anything like Napa Valley Cat. But let's give it a taste, whatever. Wow. It's a, the attack is big and sweet and concentrated. Blackberries, fudge, chocolate, cocoa, cassis. Um, it's long, it's velvety. I get the appeal, but there's no way in hell I'd pay 80 bucks for this wine. Um, this is meant to be consumed right now. And this is the 2016. Um, I don't see this wine, it, yeah, it can age. It, it can age, will it improve with time? I don't see it improving. It won't die, but I don't see it actually improving. Um, I get the appeal from an immediate flavor, like there's a ton of fruit in the whole bit, but I would not consider this a serious wine by any stretch. The structure on this is medium body. The spine on this wine is soft, um, but it's by design. I'm not saying Napa Valley Cab is soft. I'm saying Camus Cab is designed to have a softer spine so it is more readily approachable in its youth. Yeah, the, the nose, I mean, I'll give them credit on an appealing nose. What I don't really see is this going with any sort of food whatsoever. This is just a wine to pour in a glass and just have, if you enjoy this type of wine. This is personally not my jam, but I get why, I'll, why it is a lot of people's. My thing is, if I just want to sit around and have a, a, a yummy glass of red wine, I sure as hell am not going to. There's, there's a lot of stuff out there, 10, 15 bucks, that has the same yum appeal as this wine. So I'm not gonna spend 80 bucks for a yummy wine when I can get this all day long between 10 and 15 bucks. Again, this is Camus. Napa Cab 2016, knock yourself out if this is your jam. I know it's it's the choice for a lot of people. Um, you know, they go to a restaurant, they want to be embarrassed. This is a, a huge gift item. People, oh yeah, it's Camus, blah, blah, blah. But as a wine person who's been drinking wine every day, literally for 30 plus years, um, would I spend 20 bucks for this? Yeah, all day. Um, but it's it's no longer 20 bucks. And for 80 bucks, I'm... I'm out on this. I'm selling this stock short, <laughs> for sure, because I am nowhere near 80 bucks on this. So, uh, yeah, have fun. Enjoy it if you like, but uh, we'll get to some other Napa Valley cabs that I think merit uh, the 50 bucks, the 60, the 70, the 80, the 90 bucks that they are, because they're serious wines that should be, um, should be, you know, appreciated for what they are. But, but here, I'm out on this. Uh, yummy wine, but again, Trader Joe's, you can go 15 bucks and get the same stuff. Thanks, take care. See you soon.